Well then, welcome to London. And in this video, we're going to share our experiences in June and July of 2022. Uh, and we were there for the Queen's Jubilee. We'll look at two of our favorite places, the Tower Bridge and the Tower of London. As part of the Jubilee celebration, they turned the moat of the Tower of London into a huge flower garden, and it's called Super Bloom. And as I understand it, it is still going on even to this day. So we leave the bees behind and head into the tower itself. And what better way to get a tour of the tower is to follow one of the bee feeders around who give these tours on the outside at absolutely no charge. Called the Watergate. The purpose of the Watergate was to allow the safe conduct of provisions and prisoners into the tower via the river. Rather than using the unsafe roads around London, which were often inhabited by rogues and vagabonds, they'd steal the provisions and more often than not, they would just set the prisoners free. Now the term Traitor's Gate didn't come about until the Tudor period because it was at that time when the tower was mainly used as a state prison. During that period of history, four Queens of England were to enter the tower via Traitor's Gate. Queen Anne Boleyn, Queen Catherine Howard, Lady Jane Grey and the young Princess Elizabeth, soon to go on to become Queen Elizabeth I. Now the four of them, three of them are still here, buried within the confines of the tower. They were never given the option to leave the Conqueror's original fortress, the White Tower. Work started on the White Tower in the year 1078 and it took 20 years to build. Constructed by a Norman monk by the name of Gundolf of Beck. Now its walls are 92 feet high. They range in thickness from 15 feet thick at the bottom to 11 feet thick at the top. On each corner is a tower. Three of the towers are square. One on the far northeast corner just around the bend is round and it was in the round tower that the Royal Observatory was first established. Now it comprises of four levels. The upper level is where the royal apartments used to be. The level below that was for knights and their ladies. The one below that for soldiers, servants and retainers. And there is one more level below ground, which was mainly used for stores and provisions. But it did have a more sinister use, because that is also where the dungeons and their torture chambers were located. Now those cages are the night homes to our tower ravens. Now the reason that we keep ravens here at the Tower of London is because of an old legend. During the reign of King Charles II, when the Royal Astrologers worked in the Royal Observatory inside the White Tower, they complained to King Charles about the noise and the mess that the wild ravens used to leave behind. They said they were interfering with their experiments, and they asked King Charles if they could have the birds removed. At first, King Charles agreed, but then someone told him of a legend. If the ravens ever leave the Tower of London, the White Tower will crumble to dust. A great disaster will befall the nation, and the monarchy will fall that a raven master will be appointed from one of the bee feeders here at the tower and the man would be paid extra money each week to feed and look after the birds. And their numbers were to be reduced to six and six only. <clears throat> We've got eight now. <laughs> now. Queen Catherine Howard, Henry VIII's fifth wife, she was a prisoner inside that building prior to her execution. Other important prisoners have included William Penn, founder of the state of Pennsylvania in the United States. And more recently, 1941, it was also the prison to Rudolf Hess, the deputy leader of Nazi Germany. Right here, ladies and gentlemen, we have the Chapel Royal of St. Peter Ad Vincula, which stands for St. Peter in Chain. This church was built in the year 1519, in the reign of King Henry VIII. All the architecture you see there, that's all pure, typical Tudor architecture. But sadly, during the 17th and 18th century, the chapel suffered greatly for many alterations there. As Queen Victoria made her way along the aisle, she actually tripped and fell. The saying goes, she was not amused. Now she immediately set up a royal commission to restore the chapel back to its original Tudor design. 
One of the tasks of that Royal Commission was to exhume all the bodies that lay buried beneath the floor. They were given the task of trying to identify those bodies where possible for reburial in a mass grave down inside the crib. However, all the bodies that were exhumed from underneath the altar table, they were exhumed, correctly identified and laid to rest back in their original grave. From underneath the altar table inside our church, ladies and gentlemen, is the final resting place of Queen Anne Boleyn, Queen Catherine Howard, Lady Jane Grey and James Scott, the Duke of Monmouth. Here on Tower Green. The names of those six people are now commemorated on the glass memorial behind me. Uh, the most famous one, though, was our first one, Henry VIII's second wife, Queen Anne Boleyn. Now, Queen Anne was held here at the Tower for the final 18 days of her life, prior to her execution in the year 1536. She'd been tried and condemned on various crimes, such as adultery, witchcraft and incest. But so scared was she of the block and axe, she asked to be executed in the French manner with a two-handed sword. We even brought the executioner across from Calais in France. On the day of her execution, as Anne knelt down over there to say her final prayers, the executioner quietly and gently took the sword out from underneath a pile of straw where it had been hidden. With one swift blow, he took her head clean off. Now, so swift and so precise was the blow that he struck. It was said as the executioner lifted Anne's head for the crowd to see. Her eyes were still staring around at the crowd and her lips were still moving in prayer. After the tour outside, we just briefly stopped in the armory, uh, and it was way too crowded to get into the crown jewels. So it was a nice day, and it was time to get out the drone. highly recommend you try to get to the sites at night because they are so well lit, including the Super Blue. Also, there are some very good places to eat along the waterfront here. We now turn our attention to the Tower Bridge, which is a suspension bridge over the River Thames, and it was opened in 1894. You can walk across the bottom level of the bridge, but there are walkways also at the top, and you can cross the bridge that way.
watch carefully, you'll see what I believe to be a hawk or a falcon fly by. Wasn't a seagull or a raven, that's for sure. HMS Belfast is a warship that was commissioned by the Royal Navy in 1939 and was used extensively in World War II and also the Korean War where it played a role in the UN blockade of North Korea. The views are even more spectacular at night, so sit back and relax and enjoy the views of the Tower Bridge from a drone's eye view. Well, that's it for this little tour. If you enjoyed it and like to see more, please hit the subscribe button.